should you have double jaw surgery to treat obstructive sleep apnea or upper airway resistance syndrome. You've been diagnosed, you've tried a CPAP, you've tried a mandibular advancement appliance, you can't tolerate either, you still feel really bad, um, your energy levels are low, you have a hard time concentrating, you um, have an impaired mood, and people are telling you that jaw surgery is your only other option. At this point, I would pause. I would pause and I would reflect on your lifestyle or several, several aspects of your lifestyle and what can be done to improve your energy levels throughout the day, your sleep quality at night, and your sleep breathing at night. And there are several things we could do. I'm gonna focus on five today because I think they're the most important and the most bang for your buck. And here's the other cool thing. If you address these things prior to deciding whether to have surgery, they will put you in a position where you can better and more clearly make that decision because you've ruled out all these other things that could influence your sleep and your sleep breathing. And if you're at that point and you still decide to go forward with surgery, you'll put yourself, or you'll, you will have put yourself in a position where you heal faster and your, your, um, your recovery from surgery is a lot smoother because your body's in a, a better, healthier state to put up with such a dramatic uh, invasive stressor on its system. And the five things that I would address at this point are gonna be um, your circadian rhythm, nutrition and supplements, exercise, mental and psychological health, or sorry, mental, and, uh, mental health and stress management, and then the fifth is going to be weight loss. So circadian rhythm would include getting sunlight, outside sunlight early in the morning. It would include avoiding bright blue light and overhead lights in the evening. It would also include, you know, paying attention to what time you're exercising. Hopefully you're exercising in the morning and what time you're eating. And hopefully you're not eating very large meals very close to bed. This will influence your sleep, your sleep breathing, and your energy levels the next day. Um, nutrition and supplements. I put these in the same category, but they are not the same thing. If your nutrition is crap and you're eating terrible things, but your supplements are, are superb, you're missing something. So make sure you work with someone on this uh, who understands sleep and sleep breathing and how nutrition can influence these things because if you can master that your energy levels throughout the day can improve quite dramatically. Uh, exercise. Look I understand this. You are so tired some days that you can't even get out of bed or maybe even most days or you're having a hard time getting out of bed. Uh, how can you even imagine exercising five to six days a week? Just do it. Just push past that feeling if you can. Um, this is a cycle that is so hard to break when you have sleep issues. And I'm here to tell you that if you can start to disrupt that pattern and you can start to push yourself to, to exercise, and ex exercise outside would be even better because then you get the sunlight. And if you can move more throughout the day, it will, we, we know that it will improve your sleep quality and it may even influence your, your sleep breathing because you're gonna influence your autonomic nervous system and your hormonal rhythms throughout the day. So please, whatever you can do to start exercising daily, some combination of strength training and aerobic training, it's only gonna positively influence your sleep. Uh, the next would be stress management and, and your mental health. If you are completely ramped up throughout the day, you don't even know what relaxation is, and you only have one gear and you're always up here, uh, I would, Again, pause, well, we're already pausing, but pause and make sure that you do a better job at managing that. Uh, modern life is very stressful. And so if you can, if you can uh, find ways to calm yourself so that you have more than one gear, um, that could include talking to a psychologist or a friend, it could be writing, it could be just getting time outside by yourself, it could be um, planning because that gives you some more control of your life, could decrease anxiety. Uh, there's several things you can do here. And again, if you can turn down a notch and at least have another gear, it potentially can help your sleep at night because you're not stuck in this uh, sympathetic nervous system um, 
overdrive constantly uh, and during sleep you don't want to be in that state uh, and the third sorry the the fifth uh, thing here would be losing weight so we all know you've probably heard this from your doctor as well that if you lose weight your sleep disordered breathing or your sleep apnea will decrease in severity um, i've seen that over and over again clinically if you do the first four things on this list it's very likely that you'll start to see weight loss anyway but my suggestion is if, if you're willing to have someone cut off your face literally cut off your face and move it forward and fixate it there um, that it it's probably worth doing everything you can to avoid that and and uh, even if it's uncomfortable so I, I suggest doing what you can to to lose as much weight as possible and get down to your healthy weight prior to deciding yes on surgery uh, hopefully if you do all five of these things and you reassess and uh, you'll have a more clear picture of if it makes sense to go forward with surgery or not in your case because um, all of these could add up you know you get five percent out of nutrition you get ten percent out of exercise and and you'll notice your your energy changes throughout the day and this isn't a quick fix i expect it to probably take you one to three years to make these changes but honestly in, in most scenarios with most people i've worked with it's been worth doing so uh, if you have any questions about this please email me at summerspt.com i'd be happy to help